Morning, guys. Um, all right, so if you had met me when I was a teenager and you had said, Nathan, what do you fear more than anything else? I would have said something like, I don't fear spiders, I don't fear heights. What I'm afraid of is being useless to society, having no place, no value that I can add to our civilization, nothing that I can excel at. And I couldn't have told you why I feared that. I just did. It was simple. It terrified me. Um, but if we fast forward to today, I can tell you why. And it's because I didn't know where I belonged. Simple as that. I just didn't know what I fit in with. But I knew that I liked business. It was just something that I was kind of good at. I just did it for fun. But if you had said to me, do you identify yourself as an entrepreneur? Do you belong with entrepreneurs? Are they your tribe? I would have said, no. I have these misconceptions about entrepreneurship and business. And I really think that misconceptions are what can sometimes prevent us from belonging to a certain tribe. And so I kind of want to just break down some misconceptions that I faced and then maybe provide a format which we can you know, identify an interest that we have and then identify the misconceptions that we have about it that stop us from feeling like we belong. So my favorite misconception to break down around entrepreneurship is money, the idea that you need a lot of cash to get started. Um, I started my first business when I was 16 selling vitamins on eBay. And all it took was buying some stock, literally like, I think I got like 10 <coughs> packets of Blackmore's Lipranol or something like that. And then I just tried to see if I could sell it for a dollar extra on eBay. And that was the first go. And it worked, you know. Um, from there, it just kept going, you know. You don't need a lot of cash to start a business. Now, surely there's like lots of industries where you do hospitality. I just had um, a sandwich shop which I sold about two weeks ago now, and um, that was an expensive business, I'll tell you that. Hospitality takes no prisoners. Um, but from there, like, you don't need too much cash, especially with web-based businesses. So after hospitality, I'm going definitely back into web because you can start businesses with literally a $10 domain name and maybe some knowledge of how to use something called WordPress, a free, free tool. The next one is that you have to be born with it. And that's the most common misconception that people have. You have to be born with it. Like, I ain't no Zuckerberg, OK? I'm no Branson. But entrepreneurs come in all shapes and sizes. The guy who has his, you know, he's an electrician or a plumber, I don't care if you have a cleaning business, it takes that same appetite for risk um, and the willingness to like, create your own future and, and be who you want to be. Um, the other idea is that of other common misconception is that you have to have a really unique, innovative idea. It has to be something brand new, better than sliced bread. The secret is some of the best entrepreneurs, all they do is copy other existing business models. The funny thing about Australia is that we're really, really, really good at going to the States, seeing what's working over there and bringing it here. They're not innovating at all. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because we're still bringing a proven business model. We're less likely to waste money and we're going to create jobs in the process. Some great examples would obviously be like um, all the Mad Mex and Zambreros and Guzmini Gomez. It all came from Chipotle. Um, what next? Okay, the idea that you need a business plan. That's a really common misconception. When you start off, you're like, everyone will be like, oh, you've got to write a business plan. That's so wrong. <laughs> Don't write a business plan. Um, all you really need is to figure out, okay, can I create the value that someone else wants to pay for, and they're going to give me money for it? And can I do that on a repeatable, scalable way? That's the only thing that and like someone who's trying to start a business needs to do, come up with an MVP, a minimal viable product. And that should only take, you know, 48, 48 hours potentially. Um, there's probably two other really common misconce misconceptions that I'd address. The first one is age. The idea that, oh, you know, I'll wait till I finish university or I'll wait to, till I've reached this promotion or I've saved up this much money. The idea that you need to have wisdom or a certain degree before you can try and attempt to start a business. But the true fact is you can start today. You can always start now. The best time is to start now because as soon as you start, then you'll start learning. You'll start failing, but you'll start learning. And that's the most important part of trying. Um, I think finally, the, one of the biggest things that was always stopping me from getting started was this idea that um, I had to have you know, this knowledge of accounting or tax or legal laws, and it was a real b mental barrier that I had in my mind about, 
oh, I don't know how to set up a company or incorporate and all this kind of stuff. That's not true as well. Yeah, it comes back down to that same fundamental thing of coming up with a minimum viable product and proving that you have a repeatable, scalable business model. So creating your product, seeing if someone will pay you for it. Everything else comes later, and you can figure it out. So I'll leave you with one challenge. Identify something that interests you, something that you're passionate about, and write down all the misconceptions that you have, all your fears and doubts about why you can't feel like you belong to that tribe, what's stopping you, and then try and prove yourself wrong on every single one of those, and maybe, just maybe, you'll find your tribe and where you belong in the process. Thank you.